Hello and welcome back to my studio. If you're new here, I'm Lois from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and I often show you um, how I work in my studio, either on demos for YouTube and Patreon or in my own personal work. Today I was trying to paint um, a slightly different painting to the one that you can see on the screen now, uh, but the sky went completely wrong. And when you're in the middle of painting wet in wet, you have to think quickly because there is only a certain amount of time that you get to paint a sky. Um, so I'm going to show you how I managed to change the sky and therefore salvage the painting. I had intended this painting to be of a bare winter tree and a stormy sky with like billowing clouds across the moors. But instead, I changed it to this leaden grey sky, threatening rain that you can see here. I'll show you how I painted this from start to finish and um, show you the exact point when I made the decision to abandon the sky that I had intended to paint. And I really hope that you find it helpful because quite often skies can go wrong and not go the way we want them to. But that doesn't mean that we abandon the painting. If we're quick and think on our feet, then we can change things. Here's my um, simple pencil sketch, um, a winter tree or two and some rugged sort of indications of the moorland. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold press watercolour paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 20 to 30 degrees. I'm using a large wash brush. You can see that my brush wasn't quite washed out properly, but it doesn't matter too much. And the idea was to wet the sky mostly all over, leaving a few dry patches for some nice dramatic clouds with a range of soft and hard edges. And then starting off with raw sienna and then introducing Payne's Grey. And you can see it started off really nicely. That's exactly the way I wanted it to. Uh, but then once I introduced my Payne's Grey, then it doesn't quite go according to plan because I think there's a little bit too much water on the paper. When you're painting wet in wet, it's a good idea to allow the water to soak into your paper so it's not sort of running off the surface. And I think I was a bit quick here. You can see it sort of running down in places and it's still looking OK at the moment. I think if I'd stopped there, actually, I would have had a lovely sky but I was a little bit concerned about, about it and kept going and ended up completely overworking the sky. You see, it's running down the page here, but at this stage, if I laid my board flat, then that sky would be fine. But I think I'm just trying to sort of soften off a few edges um, it's difficult sometimes with wet in wet skies because you kind of want to get the best sky that you can, but you want to do as few brush strokes as possible. And you can see here introducing more raw sienna and then darker Payne's grey is really starting to spoil the freshness. And I can kind of see this happening in front of me. So now I pause, I think, and I think quickly on my feet and I decide that I can, it's all still wet, I can change the sky. And so this is where I can take a water spray and very lightly spray the sky. Any water spritzer will do. And then turn my board 90 degrees. This will cause, as you can see, all the paint to run down across the sky that I've already painted. And what this will do, if I turn it different ways and keep spraying if I need to, I can turn it upside down and then um, from side to side. And I can use my brush, maybe a little bit more paint. And the newly sprayed wash is now covering that whole sky area slowly but surely and evening out. And that's what I'm looking for. So after a few more tips and tilts, I've now laid my board flat and the wash is sitting where I want it to. So it should dry in this kind of graduated grey wash and give me that leaden grey sky.
I'm now going to add a bit of foreground and midground. And where I'm painting over the damp sky wash, I'm using really rich paint. And I'm going to be using mixtures of raw umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna, sap green, maybe a bit more Payne's grey. And I'm slowly going to build up my um, rugged moorland um, landscape. I'm still using my large wash brush, which is a Princeton Aqua Elite um, synthetic mottler brush, one and a half inches. I might swap to a mop brush, maybe a flat brush, and just try and see if I can get some wet in wet diffusions just across the edge here where the sky meets the land. But the rest of the land I'm going to be painting wet onto the dry page and just randomly dipping into my colours and using fairly rich mix, mixtures of paint to build up texture as well as tone to start off my moorland. So that's my moorland just about done and now I'm flicking water, clean water, onto the moorland and the little drops of water should push the paint aside in places and give me some little runbacks, blooms and textures and link passages of the paint together. Then running through the tree trunks with the tip of my palette knife and also just sort of scraping through the damp sky wash will just give me the beginnings of my tree. And at this stage, I hope you can see that my board is laying flat so the washes don't move anymore. I shall leave everything to dry completely now and see whether I've managed to salvage the sky, but I think it looks okay. If you see lots of little white patches and I'm wondering why I've left those in the land, is because that's often the way that I paint. When I paint my landscapes, painting something and nothing, I'm left with these little white patches and I'd rather leave them there just in case I might, might want to keep a few in the finished painting for highlights or interesting features. And if I don't want the white of the paper showing, I can just paint over them with my moorland colours. And here's the dry wash. I'm pleased with the sky. I managed to salvage it. I've got that leaden grey sky uh, that you get just before um, a rainstorm. And so I'm really pleased with that. So now I'm going to paint over quite a few of those little white marks because I don't think I need many of them in this kind of atmosphere of painting. Um, so I'm just going to sort of paint over them using um, the same colours that I used to start with. So burnt sienna and then a bit more Payne's grey. And I shall begin to add in lots of texture and tone. I hope you can see all the beautiful runbacks and shapes that have been created uh, where I flicked the water into the rich damp paint and it's produced some beautiful effects that have given me uh, the suggestions of my moorland without me having to paint too much. So all I'm going to do is enhance the effects that watercolour gave me and see if I can just sort of bring this moorland out a little bit more and then I can begin to paint my tree.
any small brush with a good point will work for painting these kinds of simple loose trees. I'm working around the marks that I scraped in with my palette knife earlier so I keep some of those lovely highlights and some of the colour that was left there. I'm now going to add the suggestion of some foliage onto the tree branches using my fan brush and sap green with some raw umber and a bit of Payne's grey. And now using the tip of the palette knife to etch through the foliage and scrape back to the sky colour so I've got some lighter branches there. And I think I'm just about finished now so I'm going to remove the tape and see how it looks. And considering I almost ditched the painting at the beginning when the sky went wrong and got completely overworked, I'm really pleased that I thought quickly to spray the painting, tip and tilt it, so that instead of an overworked stormy sky, I've got this nice sort of grey wash with a hint of raw sienna in the background, which gives me the threat of rain. I'm just going to put in a few little sticks and twigs with the rigger and my darker colour uh, just to link a few of those little sort of marks and suggestions of moorland in the foreground. Not too much, just a few sort of firmer dark lines there just to bring the painting together. And then I'm going to call that finished. Well, I hope you found that useful and I hope you'll remember um, if you're in the middle of a sky practice or any kind of painting and the sky goes wrong, rather than continuing to overwork it even more, 
then you can often get away with spraying the sky and tipping and tilting it. Um, it can take a little bit of practice, like anything in watercolour, but it's certainly worthwhile having a sort of a flexible appro approach when you're painting uh, wet in wet, because if things go wrong, then of course you can always change things. Many thanks for watching. Uh, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already, as it really helps with our reach. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. If you'd like to support either of us on Patreon, then please follow the links below. Many thanks again. Take care and happy painting. Bye.